I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm back out in Las Benitas. It's been way too long since we did a bit of walking around and showing you guys the beach area. So I'm starting from all the way up on the estuary on the south end. I say up, we kind of think of it that way. But the south end of the beach, I'm going to show some of the bit along the estuary so you guys can see it. I'm going to turn the camera around, I'm going to turn the mic around, I hope, and get this well and get you guys a video of what it looks like in this area. Again, we did this in 2021, but it's been quite a while. There's been a lot of changes on the beach of course and a lot of people didn't see it back then so we're going to do a walk today so you guys can see what Las Benitas looks like so right after the bump we're going to head out this way first we're going to bring up a map and then we're heading south to Barca de Oro and then heading along the beach road Look at that beautiful sun today on the beach. You may not believe we're here on the beach. This is what it looks like just off the beach on the road, just behind it. But you guys want to know where we are. So we're going to pop up a map right now, let you see where we are, give you a kind of a getting your, your position there. And we're going to head to Barca de Oro on the corner at the, at the top of the estuary. And then we're going to go along the estuary road and around the corner there. So you can see what this part of the beach is. This is the farthest Southern point without actually going out on the estuary. We can walk that another time, which I'd like to, because I used to do a lot of those walks in the morning, but all right, you've seen the map, you know where we are. We're heading this way now. All right. We're starting our, that is a goat yelling at me. So we have off to our right here, we have a road that goes down to what's the large square on this part of town. That's where the bus turns around. And we have a large pulperia up here. And this is this is the upper road. This is the road that runs behind the beach. And it doesn't go the whole way, but it creates the outer loop. And so this is the very southern end of the loop. And as you can see, this is not a popular area and it does continue on we're not going to go on straight we're going to turn and do the loop and go down to the beach but this road does continue on along the estuary there are some houses along there there is a community back there off the beach but we will save that for another time that's not an area the tourists go to there is one or two extra heroes down there foreigners but very few it's quite rare now this I don't feel like this house is that tall before. All right, you can see the road going straight, but we're gonna take the right here and head down. So importantly, this is where you'll get your bearings. During the busy season, which is coming up in just a couple weeks, the road here becomes a forced loop and much of this is one way. So this is where traffic has to come through. So don't be surprised if you're here during Semana Santa that you will see this. But this structure right here, this is the back corner of Barca de Oro and Barca de Oro continues down this way. So that's, if you're looking at a map or you're looking for different hotels, this is one of the anchor hotels here on the beach. We're gonna head down along it. Give you guys a good view of it. Oh, you can see the bus down the road heading back to town. This is where the the bus, what we call the beach bus, the one that comes from uh, Leon to here, turns around. This is the very farthest southern point of the bus loop. Now this house is new. This is really nice. Since the last time we did the video here, you can I mean, this is under construction now, right? So obviously it's new. The last time we were here and did this, this was not here at all. That is a big two-story very close to being done check that out very nice this is quite hidden but right next to that's where we just came from it goes up just a little bit it's a little bit of an incline nothing nothing big and this is all barca de oro on the left this is barca de oro's parking on the right show that to you This house on the right here, relatively new, but I don't think it was ever finished. I don't really know the details. It's been here as long as we have, but it was definitely new about that time. Here is coming up on the main entrance of Barca. Okay. 
And here we have the estuary. So Barca sits directly on the waterfront, but not always is there water. That's This area is very interesting for that. So we're gonna show this a little bit. You can see some of the boats that are here. And this is the beach road that we're looking down. And then here you can see the bus sitting. Got a few houses here, but just up there, there's the big square, which you'll see on a map. Actually, we'll take a moment and bring up the map and show that to you so you understand what we're looking at. It's not really used that much. It's where buses turn around. It can be used for parking. It can be used for some events and stuff. But in general, it's mostly just an empty square. And here in the corner is a place that should be a restaurant, but never seems to be. But we're going to go out. Again, this is Barca de Oro on the left. We're walking out to the estuary, which is absolutely beautiful, but it's mostly sand dunes right now. We're basically on the water, so there is a lot of wind. So this is an active estuary that you see people in the water here, and it's flowing down there. You can see it flowing really hard, but it, it pretty much ends here. But at times, all of this will be underwater. All of these houses and businesses here, the water goes right up to their foundations, and it'll even, even flow over the road. So where that truck is, the water will actually, at times, and just, just maybe two months ago, we filmed down here, and the water was going completely over the road it was it was unbelievable so that's how much it varies all these boats sometimes will be floating up at road level and sometimes not so this estuary has a dramatic change during the tides and you can see people way out there enjoying the estuary and if you watch my old episodes from 2021 this estuary was all silted up and we had to have a major crew come in and clean it all out and everything and it was a really interesting thing that happened when we were first living here so that is that is where we are and we're gonna head out to the beach road explore a bit And that is, people wonder about trash pickup, that is the trash truck. Even out here on the beach, people say, well, isn't there trash pickup? Yes, absolutely there is. They go door to door and get all your trash. Just, there's always one issue or another. This place mostly sells clothing now, but I, it would make a great restaurant. <laughs> My buddy there at the Pulperia. This is Shimara. And this is the Lazy Turtle, which was an operating restaurant oh six years ago seven years ago and uh two years ago we heard someone bought it and was going to open it back up but as you can see no one has been here in years nothing has changed nothing's been touched it is exactly as it was years ago now this is los cocos this is a kind of higher end local restaurant and they have their own pulperia there beside it. Now I'm gonna take a moment and turn around and just show you the, the estuary from here. And the view of Barca. Just to give you a nice idea where we are. This is a beautiful area along the beach. We have a new house being constructed here. I was not aware a new house was going in here. Clearly there was an old house here before. Buenas. This was a restaurant not so long ago. Shut down, I think last year. Over here on the estuary, nearly everything is off beach. Because the water comes up so high, it is very hard to be on beach. But directly across the street is quite popular. Now this place on the left was nothing as big as this last time I was here. Hola, como estas? For those who know 
Wilbur from my channel as his wife and her restaurant. They were much smaller before, so that's encouraging that they have grown so much. This is a house for sale for those looking for a place nearly on the beach. This is one that is available and it's a really cute spot. It's very hidden, so like you don't think of it, but it's a really great spot. They are right across the water, from the water, I should say. And this is Rancho Matias, which is a very popular asado place for the locals. And we have another place for sale. This place has been for sale for as long as I can remember. Uh, here, you can kind of see it up the driveway there. These are houses, not businesses. Doesn't mean you can't run a business out of it, of course. And this one is for sale as well. I've never, I've never seen this property. I had no idea this is for sale. I don't know what's in here. Looks kind of abandoned, but there's a little tiny tower and it's right on the estuary. The estuary is weird because at times you've got water, at times you don't. It's not exactly the ocean, but it is a neat area. So for some people, it's really cool. It's very small. There's only a couple houses or structures on it at all. Now here's a, a pulperia. This is Osiris and is probably the main pulperia for the area at night. Everyone's out here buying snacks and stuff. And then there's just a little house. And then as far as I know, this long wall here has a house that's available behind it, but I know no details of if it has sold, what realistically they're asking for, but it has changed a lot since the last time I was here. Like that fence in front was not there. We're gonna have a little bit of music problems here. This is Bar La Curvita on the corner, and this is where the ocean meets the estuary so that's why we're going around a corner at a 90 degree angle the estuary is over here on the left and the ocean's directly in front of us Okay, so real quickly, this place directly in front of us, this is Pelican Surf. You can't tell during the day, it just looks like a nondescript little place. But at night, on Saturday nights, they open that up and it is the busiest, or the only, dance club in town. So if you're in Las Bonitas and you wanna go out and have a real Nicaraguan Saturday night and do the full on big reggaeton dance party, the whole nine yards, that is the place to go and they have been the party for a long time. All right, and this, so this is Pacific Breeze. This is the same place we saw on the other side. I've gotta be quiet for a little bit because we got too much music. So here you can see where we are on the ocean. So we're standing at Mike's place. This is the site of a future Mexican restaurant. All of this just went in. So this is brand new construction. And uh, this is gonna be a full on restaurant. You can see we're right next to Hotel El Oasis. And what a beautiful day here on the water. And then if we come over here, that raised platform over there is Pelican Surf and an empty lot between here and there. So this huge lot in front of us is going to be the Mexican restaurant, but that is the Mexican restaurant as well over there. And uh, they got the music cranked up, so it's going to cause problems for the recording. And they are currently, last I knew, open for tacos and stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. Now we can talk. They've got a bridge inside, which looks really cool. Oh, there's the doggy. 
All right, while we're over here, this is the road leading back to the, the big square wherever you can park in the middle of the town. This is one of those houses that I've never seen open ever, along with this one. No idea. I've always said they look like really nice houses, but I've never seen anyone use them. This is Hotel El Oasis right here. All right, we're heading north now along the actual beach road. So all the buildings on our left are on the water. And uh, we'll get a little glimpse of the water here. I mean, I've been showing it to you. There's a surf school up there. All these little things, these little ranchos that are built out on the water, they're all illegal. And uh, if any of the business owners or homeowners along the way uh, decide to report them, they come and tear them all down and then they have to start over because they're, they're just on public beaches and they're not allowed to block anyone's view or access or anything. So this is uh, Hikarito, never eaten at some of these small places, but this has come up uh, when we used to live down here. A lot of these places had closed for a long time and now they're back. And this is Puerto del Bacanero, which is just the pirate's door. Uh, they have very traditional Nicaraguan food there. And on the left here is Mano a Mano, the hostel. And we have the volcano tour bus arriving. That would be volcano day. This is the weekend, so they go to the sleepy places. On Tuesdays, they go to the big party, depending on the day. There's a big party on the beach here every Tuesday. It's not exactly Sunday fun day, but it's not tiny either. All right, we have Poparia Lopez over here. <laughs> And mostly on the left, we have private houses. Now, this is the road that leads to the middle road. So this actually goes to a small road that that goes in between uh, the different roads, the different parts of town. So a lot of times, if you live here, you may use that as a place to turn around. It's kind of the, the secret locals way to turn your car around and get out of town when everyone else is blocked. Works pretty well. There's a few houses up there. I have walked it before. Really nothing has changed. So if you see my old videos on that, um, there are some properties up there, however, that are for sale. Now this I've not seen before. This parking lot, well, I've seen this parking lot. I've never seen it smoothed out and I've never seen it with buses up there. There's a lot of people arriving here. And so now this is for sale, but it's just a lot. But that is a ton of people arriving. Wow. They are arriving here at Sua, one of the famous restaurants. Oh, they have a new walkway here too. Boy, I've not been here for a while. Amigo. Hey, como esta? <laughs> bien, bien. Hey, here you can see Sua. Very popular on Saturday nights for live music. There's a small hospedeja. That is actually where we spent our first night when we moved back to Nicaragua years ago. Now, in this section, we have private houses on the left and on the right, nearly everything is abandoned. I just walked past an abandoned building. This is an abandoned lot. I filmed all this stuff years ago, but of course, none of you guys were in my audience back then. So it's unlikely any of you have seen my videos on that. Once in a while like this, this is a house you can rent on the left, but most of these, including this one that looks not too bad, these have been abandoned for years, many years. The outside wall's okay, but there's nothing inside. And like this, this is an empty lot. They just put a wall in front of it to keep people from standing in there. I filmed a lot of shows in there before that wall went in. You can see just how abandoned this all is. And all these signs that say, say, Vende. They've been there for years. No one is buying these properties. So there's a lot of cleanup that has to be done and they're not on the beach, so they're not super desirous. Now, this is Suyapa on the left, which is known as kind of the hangout for elderly Nicaraguans, people who started traditions of coming down to the beach long, long, long ago. 
Uh, this is where their grandparents would come. And so it's, it's got a reputation for being kind of, it's popular, especially for people coming in from Managua. Uh, but they're, they're sort of a beach apart. You go there when you want to go to an old family tradition, but you're not looking to be part of the beach. It's a very different crowd than we get everywhere else. These trees have completely grown up since we used to do videos down here. It's nice to see buses coming down here. Wow. Over here on the right is Cholito's Bar. This is seven days a week. This is the place to come get late night wings and beers. This is the old worm farm, literally a Chinese worm farm. Hola. Cholito's. Hola. <laughs> This was a hostel, an illegal hostel, maybe 10, 12 years ago. But Cholito's here, on this, which is cool because it's on this elevated platform. Um, it's not really a place to go for dinner, but it's a place to go for beers, some music, pretty late at night. They don't get going until, I don't know, 10 o'clock, maybe 11. But seven nights a week, you want to come out, you want to get some light food, like bar food, you want to get some beers. This is a really good place to go. And this place, Ramada Ebenezer, is a little Commodore for breakfast. Now we're coming up on the big hotels. This is El Simple and Playa Roca on the left. These are kind of the, the this is the biggest hotel zone of the beach. This is Simple. Those who wanna, hopefully my camera's still going, it is. All right, that's the main entrance restaurant there and hotel over here gonna bop across the road get a little, little look there and then this is Playa Roca And then this on the right is Mono Loco. Now this, when we were here, when we were living full-time on the beach, 2021, this was a very popular sandwich place, but it didn't make it. And so it's been out of business now for quite some time. I know they're trying to rent it and the rent is so high, no one will even talk to them. It's completely ridiculous. So it's, it's impossible to run a business there. That's why new ones have opened elsewhere on the beach and it closed. That is the beach bus coming in from Leon. They have this weird pickleball club thing at this house. It's very strange. I've never seen anyone play. I have heard that people, after they've been playing, get charged $5 for having shown up. So definitely, definitely avoid that. This is Puesto del Sol, but definitely the best restaurant in the area. Really famous Italian restaurant, great people, really good food. If you're gonna be here, make sure you get at least one meal in there. We got some empty lots here, some houses on the left, and we are here where the loop comes back in. So we've just walked the beach portion of the loop. We're gonna show you a few things from here, but in front of us is Caracolitos, that is the big hostel here in the big uh, uh, Caribbean themed place. If you're looking for kind of the reggae scene and a nice relaxing place for a hostel. That is where you would go. You got a pulperia here on the corner. They're new from when we lived here, but they've not new, new, but, and then this road that we're looking up is the road we started on. So we're gonna head back that way and try to complete a loop, but I'm gonna try not to swing you around too much. This road going out, this is the beach road headed north. So that continues to be the beach on the left. And it gets pretty open on the right. You can see there's like fields over there. So it, it gets a lot more sparse. This loop portion is the heavy part of the beach. This is where the big population is and where the big activity is, the nightclubs, the big hotels, the big restaurants. That's all on the loop behind us that we just did. And we're going to head up this road. And then the rest of the beach, if we were to head north and continue on the beach road, it's just a single road. There's no loop. There's no middle road. So it's very different from a how dense things are down here. And this is all Puesto del Sol's villas behind there 
and uh, Now the road gets pretty quiet again as we get away from the beach. Now this house on the left, for those, I, I give this one as an example quite often. This house, the last we knew was asking $35,000. So look and see how close the beach is. That is the public access to the beach right there. And all the, the buildings you see right there are sitting on the water. So we are yelling distance, hola, <laughs> yelling distance to the water. And you got the pulperia right there. And this is the house. This is a three bedroom, it's air conditioned. Uh, it's currently rentable. I have no idea if it's rented. It's got a, a built-in garage thing. It's nothing fancy, uh, but the asking that we heard was 35,000 and no one was biting. We estimate that it's worth about 28,000. I use this one as an example all the time of how far off people are on how much they think things should cost. That you can be this close to the beach in a completely standing functional house is is not selling at 35 and no one's making an offer that we've heard to even attempt to get it. Now this place on the right, you'll have to excuse the noise. The trash truck has broken down and is making a lot of noise up here. This house, you may see it for listed for sale some places. Stay away, the whole thing is condemned. It's falling down and the person selling it is a con artist. They are uh, falsify the documentation for it, so I don't even trust that they own it. Stay absolutely clear of it. You want nothing to do with this destruction. It is so bad. Everything is rusted out. You would have to completely bulldoze this structure and start over, and uh, he's just waiting for some sucker to fall for it. So stay away from those people. All right, I mentioned the middle road earlier. This is where the middle road comes out to the loop again on the backside. Now this house right here, I believe is for sale. I've heard rumor and an associated business with it, but I know no de details. So and it's, I just believe that's the house that they were referring to. Empty lot here, I believe that's available. Don't really know. Now we're into the quiet part of the upper loop. Now here on the left is the first real road going back into the village, the barrio of Las Penitas. So this is the backside of the middle loop houses. And here is a road that goes into the village. There's an entire village back here with a grid of roads, but all this colorful wall up here, this is all new since we lived here two years ago. So new housing like, I don't wanna say development, that is not what it is, but new housing structures are going in you can see they have a huge water tank here, I assume for a number of houses. That is a really big tank. And now a nice peaceful quiet walk on the upper loop. This portion is very quiet because it's all like the backs of people's houses or side yards, a lot of tanks, a lot of open space. You can see this is all wall along here. So this little section, because of all the walls, kind of makes this area feel like it's not a place to go. It really cuts traffic, like foot traffic. Anyone coming up here kind of gets this far and goes, oh, there's really nothing here, and they kind of turn around. But there is actually stuff back here. Not a ton, but there is, and you would never know. This is a Ferretaria on the right. This is a hardware store. So it's kind of hidden. Hola! And then another road going back into the village. There was a school back there. I heard a rumor that is the school we're looking at. I've heard that that is closed, but rumors, heaven only knows if it's true. Hola! Hola! ¿Cómo está? It's kind of a quiet neighborhood back here very little traffic except for during Semana Santa the busy season of course there's a lot of traffic but that is the only time there's a couple little stores to sell soda or snacks and then on the left this is the southernmost of the roads that go back 
into the village. Sometime I'll do a walk through the village. Give you guys, guys a tour of that. I have walked it some on the show in the past, but not extensively and uh, not for a really long time. Even I would struggle to find any episodes showing that. So I will try to get that at some point. Right now we're looking at where we started. We're not there yet. We're just looking at it. But we can see our starting point just past where those girls are pushing that stroller. These signs for Playa Santa Lucia are very old. I can't believe they're still up, but that is a place that disappeared many, many years ago. Everything about it is gone. It was a little like bar out on the estuary and I went and explored looking for it years ago and found it, but it was just, just old remains. There's nothing there. There's a greenhouse going in over there. Chicken. Some people will see something labeled as a gymnasium on maps and stuff. That's this structure on the right. Has not been a gym, I'm told, for many a year. Some people we've seen on the show, like not on this show, I'm sorry. Some people whose shows I've seen on YouTube a couple years ago, one or two years ago, actually were able to stay here. I think they knew the owner um, and, uh, and I think they were able to stay there, but I've never seen this used. I've seen people in there doing some work, but it's mostly just, empty as far as i know um it's a whatever it is it's it's story and history are a little bit weird but like many things a lot of times there are people who own things and end up moving away and they never quite getting around get around to selling or or maybe there's no value in it or maybe they have high hopes that they will return in some cases maybe they forget about it a lot of things happen and uh when you're dealing with international real estate Something that happens is that people get pulled away and often their foreign real estate is not so expensive because they've paid for it in cash. They stop thinking about it. They don't worry about it and they get busy with their lives. Sometimes it becomes very difficult to return for one reason or another. They can't travel internationally and they end up, they end up kind of with, with places that just sort of linger. And so that's a thing to kind of get used to that that exists all over. So we're right back to where we started. This is the pulperia we were at when we started. The road here to the right goes down to the square that we kind of walked around at the very beginning. Chicken crossing the road there. Horse in the yard. And we'll turn and show that is where we kind of came up, started from here. And, oh, and look at all the little chicks. Aww. And then we went down that way and did our loop. So... That is our little tour of the loop, the South Loop, here in Las Benitas, Nicaragua, just outside the city of Leona. I hope you guys enjoyed getting a, a 2024 update to all the 2021 videos that we did in this area. If you're looking at beach life here, this is a pretty indicative area. It's not super different than other areas. Um, the fact that it is a long, narrow stretch for most of it with a small amount of loop, little villages here and there. Um, we're a little bit bigger and busier here than most of the beaches. Nothing compared to San Juan del Sur, but much more than most of the beaches. We're very close to the city, so our uh, allotment of resources is slightly different than you get in a lot of beaches. I'm about 3,500 people who live down here, and uh, it's a nice little community with, with, you have a bit of stuff on the water, you have a lot of the uh, restaurants and hotels and, and things to do directly on the ocean, but you also have an entire community that is off the water and in many cases doesn't think of itself as being that much of a beach place and more of just a, another uh, a village here in Nicaragua. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I'll put that link down in the description as well. And as always, share on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow.